So the Canon R10 was just released a few days ago alongside the R7. These are crop sensor mirrorless cameras to go along with the full frame R style mirrorless cameras from Canon. My name is Meredith. In this video, I'm going to cover the 12 things you need to know about the brand new Canon R10. The R10 comes in at about $1,100 with the 18 to 45 millimeter kit lens. I got the bigger lens, the 18 to 150 millimeter. And I'll explain why in just a moment. And mine came in at about $1,400 before tax. Now I didn't really need a new camera, but you know me, you know I like to cover prosumer level cameras, especially from Canon for my audience. So when I saw Canon was releasing something new, I had to take a look. And if you're new here, I like to throw as much of the complicated camera jargon out the window as I can because my audience is generally interested in is this a great camera for YouTube videos? Is it going to make my YouTube videos look great? Is it gonna make me look great on camera? Is it gonna focus on my face? Does it have a touch screen? Can I use it for Zoom and live streaming? And not so much, does it have the dual focus CMOS AF2? It does, by the way, but we'll get into that in just a second. And when I saw that one of the features of the R10 was continuous video recording, meaning it doesn't stop recording after 30 minutes, I was like, Add to cart immediately, add to cart. But you can't just buy a new Canon camera these days without being low key obsessed with the whole Canon lineup and lenses. Being a Canon camera right now is a really confusing thing to be in 2022. Yes, the R10 has continuous recording until like, your card is full or your battery dies. And this is really important for Canon and for video creators in particular, because up until now, that was one of the biggest selling points of some of the other camera brands. It also has a completely new mount system, the RFS mount. So Canon's R model cameras, the full frame mirrorless professional grade cameras that run from like two grand to six grand, they all use RF lenses and the R10 being an R model mirrorless, but crop sensor, so a little bit smaller, take the RFS lenses, but they're also compatible with the RF lenses. And some of those RF lenses are pretty pricey. We're swimming in the big kids pool now, but don't worry. I don't think having these professional lenses are necessary for creating YouTube videos, especially videos like this, where you're talking to the camera, maybe getting some B-roll and then publishing them to YouTube. You have heard me gush about the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4 lens for the M style Canon cameras, like the M50 or the M50 Mark II, which I'm recording on right now with said Sigma lens. It's super affordable. It gives you that beautiful, luscious, blurry background. It's perfect for shooting in a small space. And I, I even designed a t-shirt for it. Coming soon. And it's not compatible with the R10, even with an adapter. The M body style cameras are just entirely different and Sigma doesn't even make an RF or RFS. So to my friends over at Sigma who don't know that I exist, <laughs> please, please do something. Now, the reason I bought the R10 with the 18 to 150 millimeter lens instead of the regular smaller 18 to 45 is that the small guy has a f-stop minimum of 4.5 and the 18 to 150 lens, more telephoto lens, um, goes down to 3.5. So it's still a far cry from 1.4, but it's still, I felt like it was a better lens overall. So that's why I went with the 15 to 150. So what else would you like to know about the Canon R10? It shoots up to 4K, 30 frames per second and 24. It will do 60 frames per second, but then the 4K gets cropped a little. And of course it shoots 1080, 24, 30 and 60 frames per second. It does have a fully articulating touch screen. It has a mic input. It does have HDMI out so that you can use this camera for your Zoom calls or your live streaming. And it has a USB-C port as well. So you can connect it with your computer, offload your images and your videos, change your settings. It has one memory card slot and the battery is the LPE17, which is the same that I had for the M6 Mark II. And I know like throwing out a battery model is a little little bit 
jargony, but I told you, you have to be mildly obsessed with these things to like understand what Canon has out there in the wild right now. It does, of course, have outstanding autofocus, always one of my favorite features with the Canon cameras. And it's really a necessity if you are talking to the camera or shooting any anything, really, anything at all, especially for videography. And the R10 uses some of the same tech from that $6,000 R3, like the dual pixel CMOS AF2. So it can not only autofocus on humans, but also animals and like moving vehicles. Sounds quite useful. You can connect the R10 wirelessly to your phone or your computer so that you can pull your video files, your photos off of there, but it doesn't have a Wi-Fi button on the side. That's actually one of my favorite features of the M50 Mark II. Now I've only been playing with this here and there, so I can't give you a full review. And the first thing I like to do when I pull a camera out of the box is change some of the default settings to make it actually easier to record videos with. So I'm going to cover that in my very next video, which I'll queue up for you over here. And if you like to know things about cameras and recording videos without all the technical jargon, make sure you hit subscribe.